Welcome to the Psychology and Physical Training channel, Probability Sampling Techniques. Ever wondered why proper research methodology and probability sampling techniques are critical to any research project? Well, let's break it down. Research methodology acts like a blueprint guiding the research process. It shapes the questions we ask, the data we collect, and how we interpret the results. It's like a roadmap leading us from the initial question all the way to our final conclusions. Now let's talk about probability sampling techniques. These are the tools we use to select a representative sample from a larger population. Whether we're using systematic, random, stratified random cluster area or multi-stage sampling, the goal is the same, to ensure accuracy, reliability and validity in our research findings. Choosing the right sampling technique can greatly influence the quality of our research data. It's like selecting the right lens for a camera. It can change the way we see and understand the world. Now that we understand their importance, delve into the world of probability sampling techniques. Understanding probability sampling techniques. Probability sampling techniques are the foundation of good research, but what exactly are they? Well, in simple terms, these are methods that allow us to select a subset of individuals from a larger population in a way that every individual has a known non-zero chance of being selected. This approach is crucial for achieving representative and unbiased results in research. There are various types of probability sampling techniques. Random sampling, the most basic form, involves selecting individuals purely by chance. Systematic sampling, on the other hand, involves a systematic approach in selecting individuals. Stratified random sampling divides the population into distinct groups or strata and then selects individuals from each stratum. Cluster sampling involves selecting entire groups or clusters of individuals, while area sampling focuses on geographical areas. Finally, multi-stage sampling is a complex method that involves multiple stages of sampling within various levels or stages of a population. Now let's explore each of these techniques in detail. Random sampling technique. Random sampling sounds simple, but there's more to it than meets the eye. Let's dive into the nuances of this technique. Random sampling, as the name suggests, refers to the process where every member of a population has an equal opportunity to be selected. This sounds straightforward, doesn't it? But the true brilliance of random sampling lies in its unbiased nature. You see, when you select participants randomly, you're ensuring that each individual, regardless of their characteristics or background, has the same chance of being part of your study. This eliminates bias and makes your research more credible. It's like a lottery where every ticket has the same chance of winning. But remember, while random sampling is a powerful tool, it's not always the best fit for every research. It requires a complete list of the population which is often not available or feasible. Random sampling, a simple yet powerful tool in the hands of researchers. Systematic sampling technique. Systematic sampling, a method that adds a touch of order to the randomness. Unlike random sampling where each individual is chosen entirely by chance, systematic sampling follows a more structured approach. Here's how it works. Researchers first define the total population, then they select a starting point at random. From there, they choose subsequent samples at regular, predetermined intervals. Think of it as a rhythm, a pattern that carries through the entire population. This method is not just systematic by name, it's also systematic in action. It's like setting a metronome to the rhythm of your research. And the best part? It's simplicity and efficiency. You don't have to draw lots or use random number generators each time you need a sample. Just set your interval, start your metronome, and march forward. But remember, every sampling method has its strengths and weaknesses. Systematic sampling might not be suitable for all research scenarios, but where it fits, it shines. Systematic sampling, bringing order to randomness. Stratified random and cluster sampling techniques. Stratified random and cluster sampling, two techniques that offer unique advantages. Let's dive in to explore these methods and their unique features. Starting with stratified random sampling, it's a process that begins by dividing the population into homogeneous subgroups, or strata, based on key characteristics. Imagine a school with a student body that's evenly divided into boys and girls. If we were conducting a survey about students' favorite sports, we might choose to stratify the population by gender. This ensures that both boys and girls are equally represented in our sample, giving us a clearer, 
more balanced picture of the preferences across the school. Stratified random sampling is particularly useful when the characteristics we're stratifying by are strongly linked to the variable of interest. It helps us capture the variability within these strata, which could be lost in a simple random sample. It's like ensuring you have all the ingredients in a recipe. You wouldn't want to miss out on any flavor, would you? Now let's shift gears and talk about cluster sampling. This technique also involves dividing the population, but this time into diverse clusters rather than homogeneous strata. Each cluster should ideally be a miniature representation of the population. Consider a countrywide study on dietary habits. It might not be feasible to collect data from individuals across the country. Instead, we could divide the country into clusters, perhaps by neighborhoods or cities, and then randomly select a few of these clusters to study. The key here is that each cluster should include a variety of dietary habits, mirroring the diversity of the entire country. Cluster sampling is a practical and cost-effective way to conduct research when the population is large and spread out. It's like taking a handful of mixed nuts instead of trying to pick out each type of nut from a massive bag. In conclusion, both stratified random and cluster sampling offer unique advantages when tackling research with diverse populations. They allow us to capture the richness and variety in the data, ensuring our findings are robust and meaningful. Stratified random and cluster sampling, when the population demands a more nuanced approach, area and multi-stage sampling techniques, area and multi-stage sampling, techniques designed for large-scale and complex research. Let's dive into the world of area sampling first. Imagine you're conducting a research project that spans across different geographical regions. You're probably wondering how you're going to collect data from such a vast area, right? Well, that's where area sampling comes into play. In area sampling, the entire area of interest is divided into smaller, non-overlapping areas. These smaller areas are known as clusters. The clusters are then randomly selected and all individuals within these selected clusters are surveyed. This technique is ideal for geographical research where the population is spread over a large area, making it impractical to conduct a simple random or systematic sampling. Now let's move on to multi-stage sampling, a complex yet effective method. Multi-stage sampling is like a sampling journey where you go through multiple stages to reach the final sample. This technique starts with a larger population that's divided into clusters. But here's the catch. Instead of studying all individuals in the selected clusters like in area sampling, you randomly select a subset of individuals within each chosen cluster. To illustrate, consider a research project examining rural healthcare access. The first stage might involve selecting counties within a state. The second stage could then involve selecting specific towns within those counties. And finally, the third stage might involve selecting households within those towns. The beauty of multi-stage sampling lies in its flexibility. It allows for different sampling techniques at different stages, depending on the needs of the research. So it's not just a one-size-fits-all approach, but rather a tailored method that can be adapted to suit the complexity and scale of the research. Just remember, both area and multi-stage sampling are more than just techniques. They're tools that allow researchers to explore and understand complex phenomena across diverse geographical locations and populations, area and multi-stage sampling techniques for when research goes beyond boundaries, summing up probability sampling techniques. We've journeyed through the world of probability sampling techniques. It's time to recap. We started off with the random sampling technique, a method that gives every member of a population an equal chance of being selected. It's the fairest of all but not always practical. Then we delved into systematic sampling, where we select every nth member from a list, providing a quick and easy approach to sampling. We also explored stratified random sampling, a method that divides the population into subgroups or strata, then randomly selects members from each. It ensures every group is represented. Cluster sampling, on the other hand, groups the population into clusters and then randomly selects a few clusters for sampling. It's cost-effective and efficient. Then we touched on area and multi-stage sampling techniques. Area sampling is geographical, while multi-stage involves several stages of sampling within chosen clusters. Each technique has its strengths and ideal scenarios. Remember, the choice of probability sampling technique can make or break your research. Choose wisely. And if you like this video, 
Do not forget to subscribe and follow the Psychology and Physical Training channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.